Thomas stops illegally. Thomas was about to leave the station when all of a sudden, Oh no, Thomas, I think I've broken a valve, said Bertie helplessly. A valve? Oh no, said Thomas sadly, but then Diesel purred by. Oh, what's he doing here? Who? Diesel. Diesel just went by. Anyway, um, I'll go see if there's any flatbeds in stock if you want me to, said Thomas happily. Sure, if you want to, said Bertie. Thomas uncoupled from his coaches and left. But then, wait, Thomas! You need to take my passengers. They can't be late. Oh, you're right, Bertie. Um, well, I need to turn around at Farquhar anyway. I'll ask Mavis if you can get taken to the works by her. Thomas coupled up the two or his coaches again and left. Thomas slowly puffed up to a station. Presumably, a passenger said that he lived too far to walk from the station, so they requested a lot ride up the line. But Bertie's passengers ended up being cross. Stop a time requested stops too, they shouted at him. Thomas didn't think it would hurt to do some extra stopping. But as the slow, long run continued, he realized what they were doing, and so did his other passengers. Okay, I can't stop every mile, said Thomas angrily. You'll just have to do the walk. Bertie's passengers were across. By the time he was done with his branch line, it was already noon. Sir Topham Hatt was wondering what had taken him so long. Thomas, he began, tea time was two hours ago. That's when you were supposed to arrive, and why are you just now arriving? He asked Thomas very suspiciously. Thomas realized that Sir Topham Hatt was sniffing him out. Uh, uh, just a few hundred cows on the line, laughed Thomas. But Sir Topham Hatt wasn't buying any of it. Well, um, from what I remember, of course, Farmer Trotter was taking his dog out for a walk. And he held me back, too, exclaimed Thomas. I promise. Uh-huh. Anyway, Thomas, if you are late again, most likely tomorrow, I'm going to ask your driver this exact question, and if he gives me your exact answer, you're in trouble, he said sternly. That night at the sheds, Thomas asked Doug for some advice. Just tell him what you've been doing. I'm sure he'll be fine with it. I don't know, Duck. He's pretty cross with me. I can always pull it, said Percy happily. It's fine, Percy, said Thomas. I think what I have to do is tell him the truth. The next day, Bertie's passengers weren't getting off at their station, which held Thomas up. <sighs> Come on, get off, he yelled crossly, but they wouldn't. We aren't getting off, they yelled back. We're only getting off at our stops. Thomas's passengers started arguing with Bertie's passengers. Thomas's driver and fireman went to the coaches to dispute the quarrel. Thomas felt worried. What will Sir Topham Hatt think, he thought to himself, and that night, he whooshed into Matford Station. He was very tired indeed, but Sir Topham Hatt wasn't there. Whew, that was close. He isn't here. Better head out before he does get here, though, he laughed to himself, and Thomas raced down the line. 
Oh, I'll be there tomorrow, Thomas. In police form. That night at the sheds, Duck was very cross with Thomas. You said you were going to do it, said Duck crossly. Uh, well, um, I was, but he wasn't at Knapford Station. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Oh, please, Duck interrupted Gordon. You aren't even supposed to be here. Duck rolled his eyes. Tom's neglected it, but he promised himself not to argue and just tell the truth. The next day, Thomas gave in and let Bertie's passengers get off at their requested stops. And about a mile before Farquhar, the starting and stopping was making his regular passengers nauseous. Thomas slowly came to a stop as the last passenger got off. Everyone was dizzy. Oh, can we stop now? asked Danny dizzily. Oh, I hope, replied Thomas. And he wheezed off to Farquhar. But as he approached, he saw something in the distance, but he was too dizzy to see it clearly till it all began to appear clearly. Oh no, said Thomas devastatingly. Hello, 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 what's going on here? said the policeman. Well, I I hear you've been stopping illegally, interrupted the police. And that's a strike. But sir, Purdy the bus broke down and someone had to take his passengers, said Thomas. It's not my fault. Your fault or not, you are getting a strike. He wrote something down on a piece of paper and walked away. What will Sir Topham have? think he thought to himself. But the rest of the story is for another day. Roll the credits. A Thomas the Tank Engine fan production.